I'm going to start with you, Darcy. I'm, I'm representing you. Oh, can you put that back up? Is that all right? Okay, I've represented you by birds here, native birds. Um, I haven't picked any for any of you except for you because you're facilitating, so you're the powerful owl that lives in Hague Park. That's what you are because you've taken on this role. All right. I'm filling in for Young Australian of the Year. I've got big shoes to fill. <laughs> you will fill those shoes, I have no doubt. So Darcy, Darcy Galland, she, they, is a professional comedian, local performer and student of marketing communication at the University of Canberra. Looking to maximise uh, their experience and connections during their youth, Darcy is always looking for the next big opportunity or life experience, hence they have taken on this role. Yeah. Darcy has performed as a comedian for uh, at the Can Canberra Comedy Festival, represented their university as an international ambassador on an industry tour of Malaysia and Singapore, eaten some of the world's spiciest food and failed to get tickets to go see Taylor Swift. Oh. <laughs> Come on, somebody give Darcy some tickets. <laughs> Darcy is currently studying a double bachelor's degree in media and communications and business at UC. Thank you. Okay, Rabi. Rabi Celestina, is that correct? Good. Is this, uh, she, her, is a student currently studying a bachelor's in events and tourism management. She's very passionate about meeting new people, creating networks and relationships, and hence why she volunteers in her community and participates and engages in the multicultural hub in the ACT. She is currently a youth coordinator for the African Australian Council ACT, so Betty and Rabi know each other, uh, work together. Um, and this was possible after she was, a, after she was a finalist at the 2022 Young Canberra, Canberran of the Year Awards where she came highly recommended. <laughs> Chip Lowe. Chip Lowe, I, I had to write this for you, so, because I didn't ask, I forgot to ask you. He, him, I think, is that right? Yeah. He's an award-winning street dancer. He's the founder and director of Project Beats. And I'm calling you a leader uh, of arts for social change. Um, in his own right, he works with hundreds of young people to grow their confidence and skills. He's also the director of the Street Dance Festival, one of the hardest working people in this town and someone I super admire. Chip Lowe. <laughs> wow. Dina. Is Dina here? Did we find Dina? Okay. Next slide. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Right. Thank you. Oh, I wish, I wish she were here. Um, she was here because um, she's amazing. She's a singer-songwriter. I hope she's, she's, she may have got lost because everybody is finding it very hard to find this place, even with maps. But she's a competitive cheerleader, and so I was hoping she'd be here because she might be able to do something alongside YouTube and show us how to do some cheerleading. So if we find her, I will ask her if that's okay. <gasps> Dina, I conjured you up. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Oh, that, was an interest. that was an interest. Okay, I was just introducing you, so I'm going to oh, introduce okay. you. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> Duna Luati Wani, uh, Luati Wani is a singer songwriter, competitive cheerleader. Leader. I was going to ask you to teach us some cheerleading moves. I'd love to. Oh, cool. cool. Um, and honest student all at once, performing under the title Dina Juana, is that right? Yes. Uh, Dina explores her anxieties through lyricism. Her sound is char characterised by evocative storytelling, raw instrumentation and a voice that oscillates between rich vibrato and delicate clarity. Dina spends most weeknights at the gym, either coaching, cheerleading or training with her own team and regularly travels for competition. She will soon graduate. <laughs> <laughs> She has graduated. <laughs> she just graduated from a Bachelor of Arts Honours and Bachelor of Languages at the ANU. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Her undergraduate thesis explores the effect of the internet on collective action and social movements. Thank you. Um, who's next? Oh, Zora. Cool. Zora Lin Pang is a community-driven artist who loves sharing food, having conversations over good food, and learning new things from her friends. Zora lives collaboratively and collectively and sees conversations, unlearning, resourcing, documenting, disorganising, facilitating, and reflection, i.e. how to live her life in a generative and joyful way as part of her creative practice. 
Are you, what's your pronouns? What are your pronouns? She hurt. She hurt. She hurt. Zora Pang. All right, I've lost my sheet of paper, so you're going to have to tell your own, like your your own line. <laughs> um, but Tobias, who's been helping me like all this week, by the way, I mean all this symposium, uh, is a photographer, teacher, communicator, and tinkerer. And what is your like your moral in life? What's your line? Uh, if it ain't broke, break it and make it better. <laughs> <laughs> Tobias, right? And Tobias is they them. Um, Arathia Sharma. Uh, is a dancer, she, her, is a dancer, local performer and student studying a Bachelor of Medical Science at ANU. Arathia dances with her local autonomous ladies only crew, Fries Before Guys, uh, here in Canberra with Project Beats Dance Studio. She's performed locally and nationally with her crew and won awards through competitions, organised local dance events for the wider street dance community and participated in numerous local and interstate competitive events. She loves taking on new opportunities, travelling and improving her skills by both in dance and academics. Oh, next slide. Yep. Oh, God. Me and my... All right, now Nina, because you sent this through to me this morning. Here's the last one. Okay. Where are you? There. Nina Mathy is a Year 12 student in the, big, uh, in the Big Picture program at Canberra College. She is studying science communication and physics as part of her project this year. Nina is in several bands and is very active in the Canberra music scene, especially with her movement, The Youth of Today, that seeks to bring back all ages gigs and shows. Yes. Like, what a lineup. Can I just... Yeah. Over to you, Darcy. Wow, so yeah, what a lineup. All right, can we get another hand, hand of applause for everyone, please? <laughs> so, like I was introduced, I'm Darcy, and I'm going to be the chair for this panel this evening, oh, this morning. Um, so, I think we want to start off just with a, a bit of an easy question. So, just throw this panel, uh, out to the panel. Um, what is play to you? What is your personal form of play, and how do you think you define it? Is anyone, does anyone want to start in particular? Yeah, sure. Sure. I start. I'll go for it. <laughs> we can rock, paper, scissors for it if you want. All right, ready? Three, one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. We'll be here forever. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, so for me, um, play is obviously to do with something that I do on a daily basis, which is dance. Um, a lot of it is just listen, listening to music um, and really dissecting the music. That's how I play, dissecting music. Um, and then seeing how I can showcase what I hear to the audience um, or recording myself and um, just playing with the music and seeing what, how my body responds and reacts to it. Yeah. And it's very cost effective. You don't, it doesn't require um, any big budgets or any money. You can do it anywhere as long as you have a, a phone. You can just play music and yeah, away you go. That's really beautiful, right? There's really like, you know, play can be cost a lot, but it can just cost so little, right? Just super easy, you can do it anywhere. Does anyone else have anything they want to wanna add, Tobias? Uh, yeah, uh, like. Play is everything, right? Like, I, when I was thinking about the question, what is play, the first thing that came to mind is exploration. Like, we grow up, we uh, crawl, we walk, we run, we jump, we climb, and each of these kind of evolutionary communicative things are just an expression of play. So kind of play is everything. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Um, I, for me, play is um, really about self-expression. It's about finding something that allows you to, like, physically or, in, you know, through an audio or through whatever the mechani mechanism is to express whatever it is that you're feeling. And you don't even have to know what you're feeling to express it. Um, and that's a great thing about play. And I think you make a good point about it starting from a really early age, because you really don't understand your own emotions at that point, but you know how to express them. That's so true. That's so true. Did you have something you want to add? 
Um, so with me, I feel like play is just you expressing yourself, just like everyone else has been saying, but also just um, in my case, I'm, I'm going to emphasize on like culture and, and, you know, a sense of belonging and just also using that as a creativity, I guess, to sort of encourage people out and as well like touch lives and give the same energy back to the community that is making you feel playful, which is really fun. So yeah, I think that is our place to me. Yeah, community plays such a big role, right? Can we like, we could all probably think of like a community where, that we have where we play or how play helps us find communities, right? And I'm just very curious, could we just go along if we have like one or two things that's like our form of personal play? Do we want to go along? Um, is, oh, it's on. Okay, cool. Um, I don't know. I I guess. Well, play means to me. If I would just quickly. Um, I see play as more of an escape, because um, you know life gets so busy and you got all these responsibilities and stuff. But then you go home and you can you know watch a documentary, start crocheting, go go play a gig with your band. You know, it's it's a way you can escape and express yourself and experiment and learn new ways to grow as a person. And that's why it's so important to have these recreational activities and stuff in our daily lives. I think definitely what helps me relax and experiment is playing gigs with my bands. I always meet the most interesting people in Civic at like 3 a.m. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and I don't know, I, I do this thing where like I have a hobby that I fixate on for like three months and then after that stops, I just drop it and then pick up a new one. Currently it's crocheting. Next up, I'm kind of looking at wood carving, but I, I'm thinking that's probably my ways of relaxing. Also science documentaries, they're, they're, pretty, they're pretty good too. Yeah, cool. Um, so you were mentioning that play is uh, an escape. I, I, I like the counterpart of that, of play is actively a connection, a collaboration for community. Um, like, I, I, I love to play with others. Uh, so, like, uh, you've probably seen me running around with my camera. My photography is a type of play. I love to specifically work with people on what they want to achieve and what uh, my vision is and that kind of joint play between the two of us. So, yeah, it's absolutely a way to uh, 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 relax and disconnect, but also to reconnect and, um, uh, uh, yeah, play. I was literally looking at the others if there's anybody saying anything. Anyway, um, I'm just going to touch again on that fact that you spoke about escape. Thinking about it now, it's actually that. Because we do these activities to, you know, to express ourselves, to feel motivated, to feel good. And if that is the only way we can do that, then that's a great ex escape for me to dive into that world where I'm just lost a bit and forget the world's problem and all that it's going through at the moment and just feel good, feel safe, feel comfortable in that space and in that moment. So yeah, that's play. Play is great. <laughs> um, for me, I feel like play, my own personal forms of play would definitely include dancing, but also um, the most important part of that for me is sharing it with other people. So if I, I can dance alone and I still feel like I'm playing, but like it doesn't compare to when I'm dancing with my friends or like with um, my dance group and everything. So I feel like that's definitely um, one of my personal forms of play, just like you said about connection. Mm. Yeah, so yeah, that's for me. Yeah, I would really agree with you guys as well. Play is both personal, but it's also a space for connection. So for me, um, I really enjoy songwriting, which is something that I find very personal, and I do prefer to do that on my own. But then you take it out to an audience, and you get the response, and you get the connection, and you have other people come to you and tell you their stories and how that that connects with them and you feel the collective joy and just the collective experience of whatever emotion it is that you're expressing. It's not just yours anymore once you share it. And I think that's really beautiful. And um, my other main form of play is, is cheer, which is just, it's, it really is all about connection because on your very first day, you'll say, hi, hello, nice to meet you. 
press up right next to each other. You're holding each other in each other's hands. If you're a back spot like me, you're holding someone's butt. You're <laughs> up close and personal. And the connection that builds when you have to work in synchronization and in such close quarters with someone um, is really incredible. And, and it gives you a sense of community. So that's, that's me. I, I feel like um, you're the first one who started answer to ask this question. So that's, I guess, a type of play where you don't follow the questions. <laughs> um, yeah, and I, I think I also want to follow the trend and say something about the escape thing that's not answering your question. Go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and say, actually, for me, um, I'm starting to realize recently that play is actually my way to embrace life and em embrace and be part of it in a different way. Uh, so I guess that's kind of like actually opposite to escaping, um, but just finding another way back in that might make a difference to our own feelings. Um, for example, if you're having a fight with your dad and you go back and think about, oh, what's my usual way of responding to this? And then just like make a game or something. Like uh, it can be like as simple as a draw of like a different action <laughs> that you can take and just take it out and it's like, oh, cook him a meal or like just do something else that's different. Um, so, yeah. Um, I think play to me is anything to do with that gets you into a, a flow state. Anything that doesn't take you away from stresses of your responsibilities, of your day-to-day -day stuff. Um, and obviously play is different to every single person here. It can be an activity, it can be relaxation. Like any type of play is play. Like I play a lot of different ways, whether it's um, through dancing, physical, fitness, um, or just even just, you know, watching anime, playing video games, um, things like that from the spectrum of having a really crazy sweaty workout, competing with your friends, um, and I love competing because that's, that's a really fun way of play to me as well. Um, thinking about Oh, what are the strategies to, to win this, you know, competition or, or this game um, automatically makes it fun. So anything that requires you to have fun and go into that fl flow state is, is play to me. I love that answer. That's actually, uh, that's so perfect, right? Getting into that state where you're just, you know, that, that flow state where you're just yourself, you're just in that moment. Um, I think, let's get everyone involved for a second. Let's just, everyone, just take a second, think about their own personal form of play. Just think about one thing. I know Tobias said, you know, play is everything. But if you can think of one thing, and we're on three, we're just going to all yell it out, right? So everyone just think of one thing. Are we ready? Now, three, two, one. Audio games! <laughs> Sorry, what was that? Lego. Lego, there we are. I saw you. <laughs> Um, let's move on. Let's move on to something different. I know we kind of answered this, but uh, what I've noticed, especially watching the news a lot and reading a lot, um, I think youth in Australia are finding that they're losing a lot of time for play. Uh, there's a lot more responsibility on youth to to work, to study, to be almost pseudo providers. With the cost of living crisis getting so out of hand, a lot of young people are working to chip into that. And do you think that? You know, youth in Australia are running out of that time for play. How important is it that we try to find that? How try to find that time, try to find that space in order to play? Um, I feel like everything you said is like very spot on with how I think the youth of Australia is sort of experiencing their life at the moment. And I think that one crucial part of finding time to play is finding time to play in a positive way that is in a, if you want to play with other people, that it should be in a positive sort of community and space. Otherwise, if, if you don't, if you're not able to find that, then I think being stuck in a cycle of work and study and like stressing about the economy and everything, it just contributes in a really negative way to everyone, to your mental health, you know? And I think that's the number one thing that's going to get you through, like especially this difficult time, is 
your mental health and having a positive space to decompress and relax and do something that you just really, really enjoy. Um, I was also so I was thinking about that and um, how as well as finding time to play, making your experiences that you're already having, like your work, like your studies, maybe not stressing about the economy, uh, that's... Um, <laughs> but we should make, find ways to make that play anyway. Like, I started by saying play is everything, but play can also be everywhere. Why can't we play at work? Why can't we play with our co-workers? Why does it have to be so formal or serious or intense or yeah i feel like playing day to day should be more prevalent um yeah we need to find those times um which is obviously easier said than done yeah i think that's a, it's a really good point um but i think not everyone has the privilege and capability to enjoy their work in certain ways and play with their co-workers and yeah that kind of stuff but i, I do agree with what you're saying there yeah i know i can definitely relate to that um you can see, like, with when I started the youth of today, I it was in year 11, and I like I, I'm in the big picture program at Canberra College. So for those who don't know what the big picture program is, it's instead of regular school and ATAR based, you know, <laughs> classes, science, math, whatever, it's project based. So say you want to, I did my first project was on quantum mechanics, so I focused on that and science communication, and basically did a whole little presentation on that. If you want to look in the history of rocks or whatever, then they'll provide you resources and advise you on how to how to look at those rocks, geology whatever, whatever your heart desires. And it's really good in a way because I'm one of the few that can say that I enjoy school. <laughs> I love doing work and I love doing school because it's what I'm passionate about. However, sometimes this passion, it can take you to an extent where you're just exhausted and burnt out for it. And I can definitely relate with that with the youth of today because I got plunged headfirst into starting a whole movement basically because I'm like, we need to have all ages gigs in the scene. I wrote a whole manifesto about it and I'm like, we have to bring this back. We've got to make our own scene. And then suddenly I was managing people. I was delegating tasks. I was organizing gigs, sending emails, and I'm like, oh, this is too adult. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 it terrified the shit out of me. Sorry, sorry, can I? Okay, it, it scared the crap out of me. And, but at the same time, it was still so fun. And I was able to make, even though it was really stressful, I was able to make it fun, and I was able to see the play in that. However, because it's so exhausting having to keep this mask up, mask up and having to keep working and working, having play is like this escapism or type of thing where you can truly embrace yourself and the world once again is very important. And when we do so much work, we can kind of lose sight on how we can make time for play. So it's very important that we can incorporate play into our work as well as make time for other forms of play. Mm -hmm. I think I think we hear hear that a lot, right? About making like work and play into one, but you still need to take that time for yourself individually. Sorry, I cut you off. Do you wanna? No, that's okay. Um, I was just gonna say on that one thing that I think about a lot is how we turn our play, we turn the things that um, are supposed to just be joyful into work and how we can avoid that, you know? Like, I'm sure that you understand this being in music. It's really easy to get caught up in thinking about, okay, but how do I, how do, I do better? How do I get more? How do I just be more? And all of a sudden, this thing that used to be an, ex an outlet for you is now a chore, it's a burden, it's a stressor. Um, and I think it's important, sorry, I'm I think sorry. it's really important to think about how we can just not try to commodify everything and just keep things for joy. I, I understand exactly what you mean. Is I'm like, because I'm when we when I first started doing gigs, I remember I was like so serious, and I'm like, oh wow, this is great. I want to play my first show. I want to be the band. I'm gonna do like a kickflip on stage. I, I don't know why I say kickflip. I don't have a skateboard, <laughs> but anyway, I was gonna like do a cool jump and everything. And then after a while, it just got so exhausting having to load up all the drum kit in the van, and then then organ in the band, and then it was just the people there was terrible. And then I stopped taking it so seriously, and it was kind of it's kind of better. But it's, it's very annoying and just terrible when we commodify play. But I guess there is some benefits to doing that at the same time. 
Um, I had another point to make, but I kind of forgot. Oh, right. One thing I think that helped me a lot, especially in places where I did not want to do something or I did not see it as fun and the way I turned into play was seeing this as a seeing it as like a learning experience and I love learning and that's my form of pay, uh, play personally like even this I was I was scared shitless doing this and still kind of shaking because I'm not I'm not a very good public speaker but you're doing well you're doing really well you're here really? <laughs> thanks um, but I'm seeing this as an opportunity to grow and learn like what these fascinating people have to say. You, everyone here is just awesome. You guys are all so quirky and cool and you're fan. I'm like, hell yeah, that's so, everyone here is awesome. This entire auditorium place is filled with beautiful, fantastic brains. And th this is play. You're learning, you're growing, you're having fun. And uh, I don't know what I have to, yeah, it's important. <laughs> I th and I think a lot of times, um, we need to reframe a lot of things in terms of how we think about play in it in itself. Um, instead of saying I, I I do the same thing exactly what you what you just mentioned hit a lot of like light bulbs. I'm like, hey, that's exactly what I do. Like organizing things for the community, organizing festivals. A lot of times we have this destination that we're like, oh, we need to meet this destination. And we think about it so much and we think about all these things we have to do, but we forget about the journey of doing it. And along the way of actually thinking about the journey, that's where the, the gold mines are. You're like, oh Instead of thinking about, oh, I have to do this, I have to do that, you reframe it to thinking about, oh, I actually get to do these things for the youth. I actually get to do these things and experience these things and learn all these things at the same time. Um, and also, I think a lot of the youth these days uh, get stressed out a lot because I think one, um, with mobile phones and social media, the comparison of seeing their peers on social media, that causes a lot of stress. Um, which also causes, I think, giving themselves time to play, you know, prioritizing time for themselves um, to play and to relax as opposed to like getting all um, caught up in the, the, the destination of like, oh, I need to do this um, and I need to get, get here in a certain time um, rather than just like, oh, you know, I have this time and I should re really reflect and enjoy enjoy the moment. And just understanding that you don't really know what is fun and what is not fun as youth until you do it. Um, and until they experience, oh my God, this work was not fun. This is not play. I don't want to do it anymore. And they need to learn that in order to understand what is fun and what aligns to them to do. Um, can I just add quickly um, that just reflecting on that is to follow your intuition, like let go of some of the rational and efficiency things and just follow your feelings. Um, just to wrap up, I think I'm the last person. Um, I feel like I'm just going to add to what he just said about social media. Um, young people have so many forms of play and if you can notice from the environment and the way we are expressing ourselves, people are doing like TikTok dances, they're doing YouTube videos, and they're earning money out of that, but also having fun with it, which is really cool. However, sometimes it's just like, if, if you just want to share with the whole world what your talent is, you sing a nice song and then a troll comes to your comment section and says, oh, you're horrible, you're this, you're that. That sort of um, makes you feel not motivated to even pursue what you were thinking as the big end goal for yourself. And I think that's where everyone has a role to play. And you know, just giving that sort of support, even just your family or friends coming in there to push you a bit and give you that little bit of motivation just works so much that you can just look at the trolls and just be like, yeah, nah, I'm good. I'll still pursue what I'm looking for, so yeah. Mm. I think this also comes into um, uh, why we are, part of why we are losing time for play but like, I, I know that this is definitely true of myself of I will, in the evening, I'll sit on my phone and I will just doom scroll, that kind of stereotypical dopamine seeking behavior. And that is time that I feel, I think I'm switching off. I think I'm relaxing. I'm not, I'm getting nothing out of this, but this is time where I should be playing. I should be learning. I should be experimenting. And instead I am running out of time 
too fine play. I think you're so right. Like so much of the youth today, and I think everyone in general, their play spaces spaces have shifted to like a tiny brick, right? Like I think everyone can relate to this has become, and especially over COVID, this has become our play space. This is where you know we play, we communicate, but it's a, so small, such a small screen. Like how is this big enough for us to fully express the play that we want to do? So can we talk a bit about like? where we play. Do we have spaces that we dedicate it to it? Do we have anywhere that we go in order to play? And remember, play can be anything, but you know what you do to play in order to relax or play in order to entertain. Can we talk about, yeah? <laughs> um, I'll start that off. Um, I think that the spaces that we go to to play should be very inviting and inclusive to everybody and not just inclusive and inviting just you know as part of your policies but also the way you engage with us when we come to those spaces because sometimes um, the environment may show something else and then the actual experience is something else um, being from a very like a um, multicultural background or very culturally diverse background, I would say that those are some of the issues that we face as young people. We don't want to go for a service and you're getting a different treatment and yet it could be as simple as me, Zora, going to the same spot and enjoying the same experience. So what, what what's the point of making it feel different for me and make it feel fun for another person, yet it's as simple as all of us having the fun together. So I think spaces should be very inclusive in that form, not just as part of your portfolio and showing off, but also really penetrating deeper to make sure that the experience and everything that you're providing us is actually giving us the knowledge and the space to express the play that we were looking for. <clears throat> oh, I'll go next. Um, I, I guess I, I use a lot of different forms of medium mediums to um, play. Like I, I got to say, with the whole mobile phone thing, I guess it is bad. But maybe it's just because I'm one of the youth that's always on their god darn phones. But it's I, I know when I'm doom scrolling or whatever. Personally, I like sort of when I catch myself doing that. I, I like to look at like little brain games or <laughs> look up some science articles or learn about current events. Like it's so cool how we have information at our fingertips that we can just learn all these really cool skills. Like you can do, I can learn how to crochet because of the internet. So that's cool. And um, I think that's how you can use it, not so much as a tool to, to as play itself, but as a tool to help you play, if that makes sense. Um, I, I, I guess some other forms of, what, what was the question again? Like, wh where, where do you find yourself? Is there a sp space that you find yourself where you oh, enjoy yeah. playing? Sorry, um, I have like the m memory of a brain uh, goldfish sometimes, and I'm also really nervous. But um, I think definitely the first thing I'd say is gigs. That's where I like going, you know, Thursday, bad night at Sideway. You don't have to pay and you can go and hang out. But the thing is, they're, all, they're not all ages. And in order to make sure this music scene stays alive, we have to get the youth into there, which is the whole thing of Youth of Today. And one thing that I think will definitely help play in Canberra, especially in the music scene, would be more all ages gigs. And I think that's very, very important and a change I would like to see. As well as in terms of like places that I go play, I, I guess, I don't know, Edison Park is pretty good or just hanging out with friends somewhere. I suppose like some infrastructure needs some more shelter and water. They wish there was more toilets <laughs> everywhere. Um, but yeah, I guess I don't really have too much to say. These fantastic people <laughs> will definitely, <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, my um, I, I have a very personal space for play, which is just my desk at home. But my desk at home is littered with uh, projects and things that I'm researching. The desk itself is play. Um, like, I have a ridiculous desk. I love my desk. It's two meters wide. For the record, if you ever need a desk and you need it really wide, like a, a, a Bunnings door, 
perfect. Um, but yeah, so really taking play into uh, uh, myself, my desk, my learning, my, my, my tinkering, uh, my, even my desk as a representation of if it ain't broke, break it and make it better. And that in itself for me is my space to play. Um, for me, my space to play is obviously at our studio. <laughs> um, but uh, uh, recently we've been like, obviously we dance at the studio and everything, but recently we've been dancing just outside on Grima Place, like on the street, <laughs> like um, underneath like shelter and like near the Canberra Theatre. There's some really nice spots there that just um, allow us to like play there together. And I think the good thing about those spots is that you don't need to like have access. It's not like the accessibility is pretty like inclusive. Like you can just go there and then like do whatever you want as long as you're not obviously being disruptive and everything like that. But um yeah I think I think with finding places to spaces to play is about accessibility and also about inclusion because if you know if some people uh, can make it there or like can get up the stairs or like can make their way into Civic or like wherever it is, then it's good for them. But if other people can't, then like they won't really have the same spaces, if that makes sense. And just to add on to that, um, same, like dance is a big form of play for me and you can do it anywhere, um, which is why I build Project Beats Dance Studio so that all the students can come in and dance in the area for free. Um, but sometimes, you know, going for the roots of street dance, you learn street dance to dance on the street, yeah. And the good thing about Canberra is that it's freezing half the time, right? <laughs> um, in every other state, uh, there's like de designated areas for street dancers to train and jam together. Sydney, Melbourne, Perth, there's areas like that in every single state. In Canberra, um, there wasn't even street dance in camera <laughs> before I started it, but um, slowly trying to build it. However, it is difficult because one of the weather, all right, it is freezing cold, and sometimes um, just feeling safe in an area as well. Uh, you can find a really nice space sometimes with, with shelter and it's like not so cold, but you do run into some unpleasant people at times, especially if, for example, like, I'm a guy, it's fine, but like, if you're like a group of girls, um, it's not a, it's not the safest place to, to do it. Um, and also because of the weather as well, it's like quite cold, um, and finding these locations is, is like a gold mine, you know, when you find a place like, oh, this place is cool, and you like, you tell people about it, but you like, you don't want to tell too many people, <laughs> otherwise they'll take up the space, yeah. Um, so for me, uh, definitely anywhere that's warm, <laughs> not cold, and you can feel safe um, because, you know, my biggest form of, of play is dance. You can do that anywhere. And the environment um, plays a huge impact on how you can just let go and just really just have fun. Um, just to, to sort of add to um, what you guys have been saying, I think what makes a uh, play space really great is a space where you can find community and I think that's really important whatever form of um, you know playful expression you do whether it's dancing or it's visual art or it's photography or it's you know music whatever it is I think for me one of the initial barriers was finding other people to do it with and finding a sense of community. And as we mentioned before, the community is such an important part of play. And so I think a good play space is one that brings people together and facilitates that connection. I think we talked a lot about, like, a lot of public spaces. We talked about, you know, uh, street dancing. We talked about, you know, all the different gig venues. Do you think that, and you, I know you mentioned that, you know, in different states there are designated places where dancers can go and they can practice and they can train. Do you think there's a, a, a need or anything that we can do to improve our public spaces in Canberra to not necessarily just facilitate dance but to facilitate play in general? How can we work to foster community public spaces that get youth involved to play and to connect? I think one, um, 
definitely doing a huge survey in terms of understanding what the youth uh, really want in Canberra. Um, and really listening, like really listening to the youth, a majority of the youth in terms of what they really want and seeing how can we facilitate that as opposed to just thinking, oh, I think that's what they want. This is what's on TikTok. Let's, let's do it, you know? Because um, a lot of times, you know, every, every state has, you know, different people, different demographic, um, different interests. So I think, I think it's very important for us to really listen um, what they actually need and want in this area yeah, of, of, of the state. Um, I actually had one time I was at the youth center and in Woden with practicing with my band and this lady came in I forgot her name but she had like this whole big board of different stuff to do in Woden and changes that are going to be made and she made us like take little stickers and put it on which one we liked the most and that, that, that was a pretty good survey I think because I feel like a lot of camera infrastructure because needs to be updated and I kind of answered this question earlier <laughs> when I when I answered the last question, when I talked about all ages gigs, but actually I took notes and prepared, prepared for this question. But I feel like a lot of young people, we hang out in like libraries, the shopping centers, school grounds, stuff like that. And the reason why is because these sort of places have a lot of access to toilets, shelter, water, food, making them really good public spaces. And I think some of my favorite public spaces in Canberra are the ones that have all the cool pride flags and the art and the murals and having stickers that say, you're welcome here, or just in general, more Aboriginal art, things like that would be a beautiful touch to Canberra. And I think it would definitely help communities feel more connected and more energized by the environment. Because I really like what you said, the type of play is influenced by your environment. And if, if we have a beautiful environment, I think we'd all feel beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, like what you were mentioning, like when you started off with your um, uh, getting uh, all age gigs and uh, murals and uh, building a, a street dance community, I really love, uh, I believe you were particularly talking about this of building your place to play or building the play you want. That's what I want to say, the building the play you want. Um, uh, and I think. Canberra has been doing some really cool things in that space, like Project Beat, heard a lot about you. Um, um, uh, also, um, uh, in Brad, not too long ago, we had the, the Urban Arts Festival, um, which was, uh, uh, if, 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 if any of you haven't seen it, I'd recommend just walking through Braddon um, and seeing all the beautiful street art from um, artists across uh, uh, Australia and a lot of Canberra artists and murals and finding those places to play. And for me, that's really big because I, like I was saying, my places to play are a lot of photography things, um, like going to those murals, finding those spaces, um, uh, but also building places to play. Like uh, um, I, I, I love uh, just going out with a friend at night and finding little shops that have lights and doing photography with those and actively having the place I want wherever I am. Um, yeah. If I could just quickly interject, sorry, I'm talking again, but with the whole creating your own space um, and the, the arts, like, I don't, I don't go to Northside a lot, <laughs> kind of south, south side, um, but the, in Warden there's a storm drain that has graffiti everywhere and artists paint on it all the time and I think that's a big element of creating your own space and it would be really cool if we could see more of that in Canberra, more freedom of expression and more ways that we as people can make our own space and can do our art and mm -hmm. I feel like that'd be really cool. I totally agree with what you're saying with having a space that allows you to be creative um, like create like camera camera has a lot of um, murals uh, but it all likes kind of like separated in in areas it would be great to see a, a space for creatives um, whether it's to do murals, whether it's to have live gigs and bands, or whether it's dance or do photography, um, it would be good to have a space that all these creatives can come together um, and do all these things and really foster the youth of being creative. Yeah, like what I said, whether it's like um, visual arts, whether it's murals, dance, music, um, it, it would be really good to have that safe spot that is also warm, yeah. So what I'm hearing is that we as a group, everyone here, we need to build a play space. 
Yeah, that yeah? would that'd be good. Yeah. I reckon like Canberra's a pretty pretty resourceful space. Like I think if we all jumped in on this, we can turn this space. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. Um, I'm also just going to add to that and say um, we don't really have any funding for this kind of uh, activities, which is the big challenge. Like we have lots of funding that's for outcome driven things. Like if you say I am going to run a workshop or I'm going to do a artwork or a album, like that's going to get approved more, much more likely than like say a community art or like an ongoing kind of series of activities or like a platform or space. Um, some seems like the funding body is not under understanding that just yet in Canberra and um, it's yeah not very you know for, uh, compared to other states is yeah not great. I think if we like nag them enough then they'll, they'll be like yeah okay we'll give you what you want. Yeah. Speaking of improve of ways you can improve you know the way we play I think this is a very bold step that all the organizers have actually done bringing all of us together and listening to our opinions and also, you guys leaving or taking time off today to come here today and listen to us, express our feelings, and probably you're going to take that in and take it further and make sure you create those spaces. But I think my question to you would also be, um, imagine the younger version of you, what would she want? What would he really want to see right now for this generation that you're seeing in front of you? And also just, you know, those things that you sort of wished you had while growing up, I'm pretty sure that's the exact thing we are looking for as well. So why come here and listen to us? It, you yourself, you can actually do that in the spaces that you're in. And I think that is vital. And yeah, thank you guys for being here today. <laughs> you know, I I just want to add like what you said there, but like really struck me because that is ex the exact reason why I started the Youth of Today. I w I didn't get all ages gigs, you know. Like I used to go to Claire's, um, which was I don't know. I didn't really fit in there too much. I was like the only metal musician. Most music class, I was just learning Slayer riffs in the corner, <laughs> but it. <laughs> It, I didn't have that access to the music scene all ages gigs, so I, I decided, you know what, screw it. We'll make our own play space and we'll throw our own gigs, we'll do our own stuff. And I feel like just pure willpower is enough of a motivator to I don't know, absolutely change the world. And I feel like everyone here has that capability. I I think we're so right. We need to get youth not only surveyed, but involved in the processes, in the organization of these spaces. And I think that that's a fundamental, like, we can't just be, you know, asked about this, but we need to be involved in the processes. So before we wrap up, I just wanted to throw it out to the floor if there's any questions that you have for our amazing panel. Yeah, in the Thanks very much for sharing with us today. Um, my name's Sally, I work for Land Care ACT and I run the Wellbeing Through Nature program. And one of my big priorities is getting young people connected with their environment again. And I'm aware that climate change and species loss and these really big intimidating issues are bothering young people that I talk to, so much so that they feel shut down and don't know what to do about it. So I'm really curious, what can I do to help you connect with your environment in Canberra? and care for country. Are any of you familiar with these programs? Have you heard about this stuff? I haven't heard. <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah, I would how, love how do to I reach you is just dance. as significant. Yeah, how do I reach you in the first place? Um, you know, through networks and channels and things like that. I'm on social media. Ooh, social I do that media kind of stuff. Too. Sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. No, um, that's fine. Social like, media, I think, would be a really good platform, as well as infiltrating schools. Um, I don't know, like, because I, I also, I understand the whole, how do I spread my message? How do I spread my word? Based, um, how do I spread what I'm passionate about and what I want to do? So I know with Youth Today, with my whole marketing, crazy marketing scheme, I basically just kind of shove it in people's faces sometimes, go on a whole passionate tangent, email schools, email venues, stick up posters as much as I can. And I think with your environment, initiative, which I'm very interested by the way, if you give me... Talk to me. Yeah. <laughs> um, it would be really cool if uh, 
what you could uh, maybe reach out on social media, tag, put up posters, if you will, or tag, make a little tag thing, a QR code, get schools, do a program, do a workshop. Really, if you want to aim the youth, I think the best place to get it is the schools. Um, yeah. Yeah, just to jump off that, I'd say, you know, social media is great, but people tend to use it for entertainment. They don't tend to seek out information on social media, or at least not that kind of information. So, in my experience, the best way to reach people is to just be where they are, whether that means being on campus, being in the libraries that you know students go to after school, being at sports event, being at whatever it is, wherever it is that young people are, that's how you're going to reach them. Because I think you'll find that like real in-person communication is the most effective communication. Yeah. And um, sorry, please ask first before you turn up at a school, like. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I meant that. <laughs> I guess I just want to say, like, you know, for, for some context. So Landcare is a grassroots Australian organisation um, that, you know, is now most of these people, our typical Landcare is a 65-year-old retired scientist, right? And so they're of a certain kind of generation. They've got the time and they've got the energy and the means. Um, and they're also geographically closely located to their local reserve. They've lived there maybe for the last 20, 30 years of their life. Whereas young people are... Uh, you know, move, moving around, they're mobile, like myself, I'm 38, I, I rent. Uh, so I don't have that same kind of ethos or background that's informed the movement, so the movement needs to change. Um, but when I'm dealing with things like parks and reserves, they're often geographically, they're not going to be things you're going to incidentally cross in the bus interchange or things like that. And it's also about young people hear the word working bee, and working bee for them just means unpaid labour. I'm already studying, I'm already working, I'm already doing my passion projects, I'm running my gigs, I'm running a small dance studio, I'm doing all these things. I don't have time. And it's not that it doesn't matter to them, the environment matters incredibly, but it's about making it accessible and doable, achievable, reachable, practicable in, in your lives. So I'm curious about how you personally connect with nature and is there a playful element for that for you or does it feel more like a burden? Um, for me, I feel like I, I'm st I study science at ANU here and I'm really, really interested in science and especially things like um, country and how to care for country. I, I'm doing a course right now on astronomy and it's there was a whole module just on indigenous astronomy and it was really amazing. And the key thing that I've sort of figured out is that the people who are going to come and help with sustainability and with nature, especially like youth, like young people, they're gonna, the ones that are gonna show up are the ones who like really, really, really care about it, right? And the only way that like, and like, like you said, social media is great, but like if it was me, if there was an event that was advertised that was like a, a scientist who was gonna have a walkthrough of this reserve and sort of educate you on oh, this is a species of plant that are actually losing because of this, and this is, you know, like education about the environment and the nature that we're in and that we have in Canberra, especially because it's so unique here. And, like, if you just walk around a new campus, every single tree that you pass has, like, a little, like, identification of its, you know, scientific name and all that kind of stuff. And, like, even the botanical gardens have that everywhere. So I feel like having some sort of event like that that would put people into the environment and, like, sort of not force them, but like really engage them with what you're trying to do and what you're trying to make us see, I think that would be, that would be really helpful. Great, thank you. So next question. Hi, um, my name's Lisa. I just wanted to say, first of all, um, I know Zora runs um, and is involved in running an arts centre, and so she might want to talk to that. But I also have another question, sort of with my work hat on. Um, I work with ACT government doing street art coordination, so I'm really curious about, you know, whether you have some ideas about spaces that would work for um, inclusive spaces for dance and for doing graffiti, street art, and so on. So. You know, you might not be able to answer that right right away, but you know, happy to come. You know, please come talk to me. Yeah, I'll I'll go for a little trot around camera and I'll like look at some places and see what some good like walls or murals. What if we even just like put up our own wall? I don't know. Not a good idea, maybe. But an, but it's an idea. So. 
So um, I just want to thank everyone for coming out today. You know, I think you've had some, uh, we've had some amazing people come out today. So first of all, round of applause for everyone who's here. You know, these are some of Canberra's finest youth leaders. Like, they're just incredible people. I was so excited when I found out I was working with them because they're all incredible. Look them up. Go talk to them after this because they have amazing stories to tell. And um, I've been Darcy Gowland. Thank you so much for coming today and asking your questions and listening to us talk. <laughs> Thank you, Darcy.